Hi, this is Xavier from Navy Recognition, reporting from AUSA 2014 in Washington, D.C. I am here today with uh, Frank St. John, Vice President of Tactical Missiles from Lockheed Martin. Frank, thank you very much for welcoming me. Oh, you're on your quite welcome. Exhibit. Uh, can you please start by uh, giving us some background information on the Air Rasm? Yes, yes I can. Uh, several years ago, the Navy identified some capabilities gaps, uh, some threats that, uh, that needed handling from a surface ship uh, point of view, and DARPA had a competition. There were nine entrants to the competition, and we were very pleased that DARPA selected the Lockheed Martin Lorazm solution as the, uh, the weapon to go forward into development. Um, Lorazm is a variant, or we like to say almost an ECP, of the JASM program. Uh, JASM has been in production now for uh, about 12 years, and Lorazm takes a, an RF sensor and integrates it into an extended range javelin to provide the Navy the anti-ship capability that they need. Can you get into a few technical characteristics for the missile in terms okay. of range, speed, capabilities? Okay. Uh, it is, uh, the missile cruises uh, just below uh, so supersonic, uh, so it's subsonic, but it uh, still is at about uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 Mach. Uh, the missile range uh, is much greater than the requirement from DARPA. The requirement from DARPA is uh, 200 nautical miles, and we exceed that with a significant amount of margin. Uh, the warhead is a thousand pound uh, high explosive warhead which uh, is very lethal against the threat targets that were uh, developed against. And uh, probably the most interesting and, and uh, the most challenging piece of the development to date is the uh, passive RF sensor that allows the missile to intelligently find its way through enemy defenses and uh, pick out the right target uh, for prosecution. Can you get into a few details regarding this aspect? Uh, yes, uh, the, the sensor has been in development now for about five years. Uh, DARPA has funded that activity as well. Uh, we have been through uh, five separate uh, captive carry tests against a variety of threat conditions. And recently, uh, and a sensor integrated into a flight vehicle successfully found its own way uh, to a, a target and uh, we prosecuted that target with a direct hit uh, with a ship moving at sea. Which uh, platforms will be able to carry and launch the Erasm? Well, eventually I think any platform that JASM or JASM ER is currently integrated onto, as well as several Navy platforms. The first platforms we're talking uh, about currently are the F-18 ENF for the Navy and the B-1B for the Air Force. In terms of uh, naval platforms, in terms uh, of ships. Oh yes, I, I'm glad you brought that up. We recently also did a first test of our ability to launch the Larazm missile out of a VLS canister. Uh, it's a Mark 41 canister, and we're using a uh, production uh, 114 booster, and we were able to successfully launch that uh, Larazm test article. And in the next calendar year, we're going to go hit targets vertically launched out of VLS uh, cells. And so uh, any surface combatant that has that VLS system integrated uh, should be able to uh, launch a Lorazm missile in the future. And uh, finally, do you believe uh, the Lorazm will eventually be available for export? I think eventually. Uh, that's, that's a long way down the road. Uh, and that's really up to the Navy and the Air Force to make that decision along with Department of State. Uh, but I believe that for select uh, allies and uh, partners around the world that eventually uh, there will be an export version of this. Okay, Frank, thank you very much for your time. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thank you.